Hello everyone, it's indeed inspiring to see you back again and this is Python programming tutorial series and today we are going to have the zeroth session. That means before Python we need to discuss something and I'll give you a highlight. So we are discussing programming paradigms. Programming paradigms means programming types or types of programming. So before you actually start with any programming language, I thought why not to have a discussion on what type of programming languages do we have. This will be very quick and very short uh, discussion on this. If you want detailed one, I'll create a separate video for a detailed discussion on programming paradise where I can discuss on uh, what sort of uh, uh, the way programming languages got uh, developed, what is their purpose and the way syntax is written. So that separate video I can uh, create for it. So what is a program? First, we need to understand. So program is set of instructions. Okay, set of instructions could be start walking, stop, sit down. Okay, so these three become a set of instructions. So this is a program. Okay, another could be power on the computer, press the start button uh, on keyboard and click on the settings. This is another set of instructions. So any set of instructions you have that is called as a program. Now in computers, what can be a set of instructions? Uh, the second example is that only in computers, uh, if I want to create a PowerPoint presentation, uh, press the Windows button, go to accessories, go to Microsoft Office, go to PowerPoint and click the click that button. So this is an instruction to set of instruction to open that PowerPoint software. So any set of instructions can be called as a program. Now, what is programming? Now to create a set of instructions is called as programming. Okay, so uh, very simple, right? Or to write a set of instructions that is programming. Coming towards programming language. Now a computer understandable language which help us to write a program that is called as programming language. So writing a program can be called, called as writing a code or simply coding. I hope this much is very clear, right? Once again, I'm revisiting program set of instructions programming the way we write instructions that is called as programming and programming languages, the computer understandable language which help us or which allow us to write computer programs that is called as programming languages. Now there's a concept called as process. Process is a program in running state. Once you do the programming, you run that program. So a program in running state is called as a process. Okay, so for example, this PowerPoint is running. So this is a process now. Uh, in my windows, there are so many processes running. All of them are processes because they have been written by a program. So there is a program which is being executed and therefore those processes are, are running. Okay, now moving forward, programming paradigms. So programming paradigms means there are different, different types of programming paradigms. I have written four only, procedural, object oriented, logical and functional. Let us go to the procedural one. Before that evolution, evolution if you see uh, that we had started with binaries, okay, zeros and ones. Then we came up to assembly level. So in assembly level, what happened? In assembly level, we had mnemonics, mnemonics. Mnemonics are called as uh, keywords. For example, if you have to add, you can use add keyword. Okay, if you want to subtract sub keyword, multiply MUL keyword. So from binary to assembly, that was a great relief because in binaries, everything was in binary, zeros and ones. It was very, you know, hectic to remember all those things. You need to refer a lot of things. But in assembly, it became easy. Then came procedural. So we'll start the procedural first. Procedural means step-by-step -step execution of a program. So what is step-by-step -step execution of a program? If you if you know that how to prepare a cup of tea. Okay, so if you know how to prepare a cup of tea, so you can write steps of it. Okay, now if you write the steps that uh, take a burner and pour some water into it, then put some tea leaves, uh, put it on the burner, start on the burner. So this way you can write steps. Okay, let's say you have written one to 10 steps. Okay, so in 10 steps, you are able to prepare a cup of tea. So if I give this recipe to you, you need to follow these 10 steps as it is from one to 10. You can't do 10 step first, nine step second, and first step third. Okay, that will mess up everything. So procedural programming is like that. So program is set of instructions and the set of instructions can be executed step by step in order to achieve the desired task that is called as procedural programming. It's like a recipe. If you are not following this, then you will end up doing something else. Okay, so in procedural programming, step-by-step -step execution is followed and that is called as C programming is an example of procedural programming. Now let me move ahead. And the next example we have is object-oriented programming. Now the drawback of procedural programming was if you have a cup, okay, the same example, if you have a cup, you cannot represent that cup in the program, in procedural programming. You can just write that, take a cup, okay, pour some water into it, but you can't uh, represent that cup. You can't represent the burner into the programming. So object-oriented programming came up with that idea with the help of classes and objects. You can create objects in the programming itself. That was a wonderful uh, you know, research and development in the programming. So you can create objects and these objects can interact with each other. These objects can talk with each other. So you can create functions that how they can interact, how they can uh, communicate with each other. So that was uh, that was amazing uh, step in the 
field of programming. Like C++ and Java, they implement OOPs concepts where we have abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance, and encapsulation. Another type of programming is logical programming language. This is more of a rule-based language. You, you take some input based upon the rule, you give the output. You take some input based on the rule, you give the output. Okay, so if you want to create a questionnaire, again, you can do that. You, you take some input and you give some output. So one question, you take input based upon certain rules, it will give the output. So Prolog is one of the example of logical programming languages. If you want to create a chatbot, a simple chatbot, you can create it with the help of Prolog. Okay, now next one is functional programming. Functional programming is shorthand. Shorthand means you need not to code for a uh, code, uh, write a lengthy code of thousands and thousands lines, which is the case in case of uh, procedural and object oriented. But here it is shorthand and functions are primary citizens. Okay, everything you will find as a function. So most of the modules are implemented as a function. You can directly use those functions. That is the benefit here. Python, R, and Scala are examples of functional programming languages. Let me conclude by saying that it is not like one programming language can fall under only one paradigm or one type. It is not like that. Python is also object oriented. And if you see procedural, any programming language you can use to write a procedural uh, way of uh, programming. Okay. So one programming language can fall under more than one paradigm. Okay. So this was just an introduction of different different programming paradigms. Uh, if uh, you like this, please do like, share, and subscribe. And also wait for the next video. That is uh, the beginning of the Python series tutorial one. Thank you. Thanks a lot.